Hi, I'm John Van Hecke, Executive Director and Fellow at Minnesota 2020, Minnesota's public policy think tank. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, it's a really great honor here at MN 2020 to be, our, to be joined by our guest today, Dana Yost. Dana is uh, a longtime editor of the Marshall Independent, now retired from that position, and a writer uh, with uh, now his second book under his belt. It's called The Right Place. And it's, a, it's a, a fascinating look at life in rural Minnesota. One of the perspectives that you raise in this is you talk about that, that demographic shift, the, the decline of population in rural areas, and specifically you address the issue about declining representation in the legislature. Could you talk a little bit about sort of how you made that observation and sort of what led you to write this piece. You really start to notice that declining shift in, in legislative power and then you notice it because you're, you're getting less and less legislation that is geared toward life in, in our area. Yeah, less farm legisl legislation, we, we, we're losing out on, on transportation funding, education funding. The voice just keeps getting smaller and uh, that's where you really notice it, I think. You know, I, I think it might be helpful to talk a little bit about for our readers and for our viewers um, about southwestern Minnesota. For, for decades it was heavily, heavily, um, you know, uh, farming itself was the, the leading employer, the leading industry. Um, but you have a lot fewer family farms than you once did. You used to have a, pretty much a family farm on every quarter section, which is 160 acres, so you could count on a, you know, a farm family with four or five kids that added to the population. Uh, and he had kids in school. Now, with egg prices going up so much, you know, the, the cost of production, most of those family farms have given way to, to larger, and I, I, don't, I hate to use the word corporate farming because a lot of them are, a lot of the larger farms are still owned by families. Right, they're still owned by some of the same families yeah, that have been but, farming for a hundred years, but, but with, they're just bigger. Yeah, they're bigger. With technology, I mean, you, you, can, you can harvest a, uh, 80 acres in an afternoon. You know, uh, Walnut Grove has a Hmong community. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I don't think a lot of people know that. Yeah. And what people also don't understand is the community decided to come to Walnut Grove because they didn't want to raise their kids in St. Paul. Yeah, and I think the communities that, that, that embrace this new, the, the, new, the new ideas that, you know, the, or the, just you know, kind of result in themselves is that the old way is done and gone uh, and we have to adapt. Those are the ones that are, you know, are at least sustaining if not thriving you know and so there are I, I think a lot of selling points too but you, but it has it's gonna take people to get past stereotypes and stumbling blocks both on the, the younger people who may want to come back there or may want to move there and on those who exist and want to think that it's still the same as when they were kids well thank you very much for Minnesota 2020 I'm John Van Hecke you can Read Dana's articles, uh, excerpts from his book at our website at uh, mn2020.org. You can also buy the book, which I encourage you to do, at LS Press and coming to you in fine bookstores everywhere.